searching for that perfect bullet header, just like hundreds of other young footballers will have been doing this week on half-term training camps like this one at Lingwood Primary School. But does that integral part of the game lead to players developing dementia later in life? Well, a study suggests that there may be links to the professional sport after it was found the brains of six retired players all had signs of Alzheimer's disease. What happens is when you head the ball or you have head-to-head -head contact in particular, it creates, it creates a little inflammation in the brain. So the inflammation, if you have this continuously or very, very often, what happens, this can accelerate the whole dementia process. So in that sense, the study is interesting, but it's of course a very, very small sample at the moment. So it, it's very important that it needs to be replicated in much bigger samples in the future. Researchers say they can't definitively prove a link between heading and dementia, but they're not short of examples. Canary's legend Duncan Forbes made 300 appearances for City before developing Alzheimer's in 2005. Last year, his wife Jeanette said she welcomed research into whether there is a link. It's been said that recreational players are unlikely to have any problems, but over in America, things have changed for youngsters who play soccer. Heading the rules been banned for children under 10 there over concussion fears. 11 to 13-year-olds have also had their headers limited to training, but that hasn't been considered here yet. I wouldn't think twice about teaching it, it's a big part of the game and they need to learn how to do it correctly and it'd probably be even more dangerous if they didn't know how to do it. Many players have built a career on heading a football, um, it's been a big part of the game, maybe the main part of the game, so taking that aspect of the game away would have a huge impact. Personally, from someone who plays the game and teaches it, I, I can't see it happening. However, saying that if this research comes back and there's been some proof that heading the football is is damaging people, particularly young kids, then I guess they'll have to do something about it. Former City striker Ewan Roberts scored his fair share of headers over seven years at Carrow Road. But this week he said he was in favour of banning children under 10 from heading the ball. And he's not the only one with that view. They do in rugby, you're not allowed to play non-contact rugby and it doesn't affect the game. I've got a 12-year-old and I'd be more than happy for him not to head, head of the ball. I don't think there's any need for, for kids sort of six to ten years old that they need to be headering the ball to start off with. I can't imagine a game of football without anybody headering the ball, but especially where youngsters are concerned when they're growing, uh, we don't know the implications that could have on, on, on the youngsters. So yeah, it should be taken seriously. The Football Association says it's going to be looking at this more closely and in the football community and beyond there remains mixed views about where training sessions like this one should head in the future. Christina Brinkley, Mustard TV, Norwich.